Welcome back to Project Zomboid. It's actually been a while since I played with Shonda. I built up a bunch of videos in advance, and I've actually been spending most of my time lately with Miriam uh, in Motel, Kentucky. So I gotta remind myself what I'm doing here. If I recall correctly, on my last trip uh, back to Muldra, I managed to find some seeds in some warehouse or another. And that has actually been one of my big ambitions back here. The reason I built this whole defensible backyard was so that I could plant a garden. So that's where we're gonna start. We're gonna build a garden today. Long term, I still wanna get that sledgehammer and I still wanna set up my whole like water filtration scenario, but we'll get there eventually. For right now, we're gonna start farming. So. I've collected um, a set of seeds here. Potatoes and cabbages. I know definitely potatoes have a lot of calories in them. Uh, actually, I don't know if it's calories. Potatoes are very filling. They're extremely filling when you put them in your food. I don't know for sure if they have a lot of calories. Cabbage, I've been told, is also a very good food for like sort of filling up your character. Again, not sure if it's all calories or if it's hunger. But either way, these are very productive foods to plant. So I'm glad that I've got them. Oh, one thing I forgot to grab, though, was a trowel. So I've heard that digging furrows with your hands is a great way to get um, light injuries if you want to <laughs> build up your first aid skills. Uh, I'd like not to do that. So instead, I'm going to grab this trowel. And actually, I do not need to be holding a saw the entire time. So let's take that out. Let's run out there. And start digging. So one thing that's nice about uh, about digging these digging furrows is you get worms from them often for free. Uh, and worms are nice because you can use them as bait in traps to catch birds. You can also use them as bait when you're fishing. Um, and so depending on which one of those you want to do, uh, they, you can get a lot out of it. So while I'm digging here, occasionally a worm should pop up in my inventory. Now, how many furrows to dig is actually kind of a interesting question uh, because... Like, th if I dig this entire area up, that would produce a lot of food. And, and it would kind of be an appropriate amount of food for an entire, like, large community. <laughs> like, because one of the problems... Yeah, so, one problem that I had um, in a previous game, in my Motel Kentucky game, was the fact that I had water and I had a garden, but what I didn't have was power. And so, I would harvest my, my food and then I would put it in a box and it would go bad really fast because I couldn't eat it fast enough. And even with like two, you know, industrial fridges, which is now what I've got in Motel Kentucky, um, I fill them up with potatoes so quickly <laughs> that it's like I have to take breaks from farming. Check it out. I got six worms now. And so I think I'm going to do three rows here, but I think I'm going to stop there because I don't want to just overproduce a whole bunch of food and you know, leave Shonda with just a bunch of waste. Now, if you do have wasted food, that's not the worst thing in the world because uh, you've got the composter, right? So I've already been filling this with, with rotted food. So if your food goes bad, stick it back in the composter and at least it'll help you get more food faster later on. Um, so I think Coalition is probably... Oh, here we go. Cog says that potatoes have only 70 calories, while cabbage has 178 calories. So, yeah. So, the fact that in my in my other game, I've been just relying on potatoes to fill my stomach means that my character has not been... I've, I have been struggling to keep my character from getting underweight. As you can see here, I've got an underweight problem with Shonda, and Shonda's actually hungry right now. I should probably go get her some food. Did I leave any food out? It looks like I did. Beef and mushroom pasta. Let's have some. So, yeah, that is something I should keep in mind. Unfortunately, in my other game, I have not found any cabbage. Like, I haven't found any... Uh... Let's see, was that enough? Yeah, I mean, I'm not hungry anymore, but let's eat a little bit more. Because I want my weight to keep going up. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, I've never found any cabbage. So I can't grow cabbage. Uh, potatoes are the most filling things uh, I've got. Uh, I've also got, like, radishes, which give, which don't fill you at all. And it just feel like a giant waste of time. I don't know what their calories are like, though. I, I, I imagine Cogs has found a place where you can look that up. So maybe I should do study a little bit and see if there's better foods I could be feeding my people uh, to keep them from uh, having problems. 
Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, just getting a little update about my son's trip to the car museum. He's uh, He hasn't been having the best time, but then he saw a car that looked like Bumblebee, and so now he's happy, so that's cool. Anyway, let's uh, open up one of these seed packets, and let's open up one of these, and let's open one of these. So characters do appreciate it. Happiness-wise, characters really appreciate having a variety of foods, like in their stews and things like that. So I do want to grow everything here. I always grow tomatoes in the back uh, because they're tall, and it's actually really difficult to harvest things behind tomatoes uh, once they have started growing. So tomatoes get to be my first row up against the wall here with nothing behind them. Each time you plant them, you use four seeds. And then let's switch to potatoes, which I think are taller than cabbages. So uh, actually, wait, I don't need to click them. I just need to right click here. So potatoes, so potatoes here. And you can see each of the things you can plant makes the furrows look a little different in the ground. So you can kind of tell what you've got even before it started growing. Coalition asks if I'm ready for the Super Bowl. Uh, yeah, my wife has actually put... Uh, she's much more of the um, uh, the football fan than I am. But yeah, she has put a lot of preparation into um, our Super Bowl celebrations. We've got more snack food than we know what to do with. So many chips. Uh, it's going to be ridiculous. I'm not eating breakfast that day. I'm just eating chips all day. Oh, okay. It looks like I'm out of cabbage. Am, oh, am I planting more cabbage seeds per sowing? Let's, let's look at this. So let's right click and I've got cabbages. I've got, let's see, how many do I have? I've got 55. Let's sow some cabbages. Oh yeah, I planted, what, what was that, nine seeds? Okay, yeah, so you can go through your cabbage seeds a lot faster. I wonder if that uh, is borne out in the yield of cabbage or if cabbage is just a less efficient thing to plant. I don't know, but now I've got my little um, garden here and that garden is going to take a while. Uh, you know, each, each plant takes a different amount of time to grow. So I'm going to let them sort of go at their own pace. Uh, you know what? I'm going to stick them in a seed bag just because I want to sticking them in a seed bag. Then I'm sticking the seed bag on the shelves. Um, but yeah, so I, I really, um, because so I planted them all at the same time, but they're not all going to uh, sort of be harvestable at the same time. And that's good because you want to start eating one of them and go through some of them before you have to then pile the rest of them into your fridge. So I think we've got a good plan here, but that was short. That's not an entire episode of action. So we should figure out something else to do. What I was thinking I might want to do now, now that I actually understand the value, I'm going to sit my worms here with the cockroaches, use them for bait later on. Um, now that I understand the value of um, of videos, of, of like VHS tapes. Um, no, not in the... Nah, let's put these in the right container. I want to put my trowel where I put my seeds. But yeah, now that I understand the value of videotapes, uh, we should get some more. Like, we've got this whole video store. I think this was the laundry and... I don't know. There's a video store over here someplace. Uh, one of these little green footprints is a video store. Um, I know that my like downtown March Ridge has started getting a little bit overpopulated. So I should head down there and try to get myself some more VHS tapes and see what else I can learn. I'm trying to remember. It's been so long since I played Shonda. I don't remember how many of these. I Did I watch all of the videos that I needed to watch from, from my existing set? I think I did. Oh, Rainfall suggests that picking up a popsicle freezer from a gas station will help with stored grown food. I have heard about that. Uh, so, yeah, that basically that there there are those big, like, sort of low chest freezers that you can get. Um, you see them at, like, gas stations and convenience stores and stuff like that. That you could use those uh, as, a, as sort of a large storage freezer to keep food long term. The problem is, of course, that would cost... Um, uh, it would cost gasoline because... Oh, I should check on my... Check on this guy right back here. Fuel 43%, condition 83. Okay, so we'll go through the rest. We'll get the fuel down below 20%, and then we'll fill it up and um, repair it. Actually, how much how much gasoline do I have lying around at the house? While I'm going downtown, it might make sense to try to pick up some more. 
Okay, I've got four full gas cans, so I'm actually okay on that on that score. That's good. Um, but yeah, so it will. If I were to install a freezer like that, which is a good idea, um, I would have the problem of needing to you know fuel my uh, to fuel my uh, my generator more because it would be probably I, I don't know how much power those freezers take if it's about the same as a fridge or if it's more, um, but. You can see from the fact that I'm rearranging my furniture that I've already kind of decided I'm going to do it anyway. Because, uh, you know, I've never actually stolen one of those. I've heard about that, but I've never actually grabbed one of them. And so I'm kind of inclined to give it a try and see what kind of cost it has. So I'm going to eat some more of this food. And I should cook some food for tomorrow. Because, yeah, because I think it's, it's getting a little bit late. Not only is it just dim because of the weather... But it's also getting late at night, and I think if I start, if I head out there and there's a big fight, it'll be nighttime by the time I actually get into the into the video store. So today will just be a farming day, and I'm going to let's pick up this crap off the ground here. I've got a space here for that freezer if I do manage to find one. There's a gas station right next to the video store, so I'm assuming that there's that there's something there that I can grab. But let me see what I can make. Uh, I've got a lot of beans. Do I have? I got some sardines. Okay, we, we got we got some options here. So, oh, let's look at the fridge too, though, because again, I've forgotten what kind of food situation I've got. I don't have a lot in my. Fr okay, I do have. Oh, I've got some rice I already cooked for myself, so that's good. I, I forgot that I had that. But I don't have a lot of other stuff here. So let's make some stew from this canned stuff. So let's have these sardine stew. And, huh, I feel like, don't I usually have, I feel like I don't have this sheer variety of can, canned goods that I often have. But, oh, that's right, because Shonda almost ran out of food. That's right, I forgot about that. And so that's why, yeah, like I expected to have more canned food options, but it's because, yeah, she almost ran out of food, and that's why we went to raid that apartment complex. So that's right. We got a lot of dried goods. That's good. So let's put the sardines in there. Let's put in some black beans. And characters really appreciate variety, so we'll try to do just a little bit of each kind of bean. So black beans... Chickpeas or garbanzo beans, depending on what you want to call them. Yeah, so Rainfall is saying that those freezers do hold quite a bit of food. Well, I'm kind of looking forward to that then. Okay, get some lentils in there. I've got room for two more thingies. Um, I think you can put evaporated milk in stew. Um, you know, I'm actually... I'm... I felt like we had filled up our larder a little more than we did. I'm glad we started this garden. We might need to do a little bit more... Uh, uh, food scavenging than we've de done. So I'm going to add a little bit more of the beans we've already added. Those bags of dried beans do last a while. You can make several meals out of them before you start running out. Which is nice. When you find one of those, it's like, oh, there's a lot of meals in this. You can, you can be pretty confident that you're set up for a while. Um, but let's put in some butter to make it a little bit more fattening. I'm assuming that adds calories to it. And then let's cook it. And then we, we should have enough food to last us through tomorrow without having to do any cooking. Tomorrow and a little bit into the next day, because I'm going to finish off this, uh, what was it, rice? This pasta that I've got on the stove. Uh, I'm going to finish that off tonight, and then tomorrow morning, I think I'll bring that rice in the fridge with me. But I'll have this to come home to. And maybe I'll have this for breakfast, bring the rice with me, and then come home to this. So I guess I'll put this in the fridge, too, just to make sure it lasts. Well, no, I'll leave it out on the table for now, just because I'm, I'm planning on having it for breakfast tomorrow. And then it's 1740, which is 540 in American time reckoning. So I don't want to go to bed that early, because I'll just wake up in the dark. Um, and I won't really be able to go out immediately. Oh, oh, hold on. So Coalition says that apparently there... Is there an actual pozole recipe on Project Zomboid? Like, is it, a, is it literally a thing the game will detect? Or is it just you're saying what I need to put into it to make what you would consider pozole? Is oregano, jalapeno, corn, pork, onion, thyme. Um, 
So, onion, thyme, oregano, and jalapeno are very hard to get. Corn isn't that hard to get. You can usually find it canned. I don't think you can grow it. Pork? I mean, I think, I, I think I've think i passed the window on pork. Uh, and t until they actually do an update, which I think they're planning, where you get, like, farm animals uh, that you can find and domesticate and, like, keep. Um, I don't think pork is going to be an option outside of the first few days. Um, or at least basically until the power shuts off. Pork isn't really going to be a thing. Coalition says he thinks that there's canned pork. I don't... I don't think I've... I've seen canned corned beef, but I don't think I've seen canned pork in the game. Um, for those of you who are joining us late, uh, <laughs> Coalition has been trying to get me to make pozole for uh, <laughs> for several episodes now. But I don't think I'm in a position to do it. Oh, he says that according to the wiki, there is... Okay, I guess I've just never encountered canned pork, which is surprising. I've looted a lot. Maybe canned pork is just... It's a thing that shows up in different towns that are not Muldra. I spent so much time in Muldra, it, it it's limited me. I don't know, but but yeah, I, I have never I have never seen canned pork. So I'm gonna eat what remains of the beef and mushroom pasta, and then while it's still raining. So even though I've I've actually got these rain barrels, I don't trust them. Sometimes there are very long periods of time in this game where you get. What if, if I set an empty tin can out? Will that get filled with water? I could try it. Um, I've gone through very long periods of time where I've gone through all of the water in my rain barrels and it still hasn't rained. And I've been forced to, like, you know, go and grab water from a lake or something like that. And so even though I've got two rain barrels out there now and I'm planning an even more elaborate rain barrel setup, um, I still put all of my pots out and I try to use rainwater as much as I possibly can. Because, you know, like if, if it is going to rain out there and just directly fill your pots, then you can use your uh, your rain barrels as a sort of a backup plan, you know. And they can they can be what gets you through the droughts, like a, like a reservoir in, in Timberborn. Coalition says apparently the wiki has like 400 food items. And so there's a lot of food I apparently haven't seen. It's interesting, though, that they've apparently just if there are that many different food items and I haven't and there's a lot of them I haven't seen. I wonder, have they just like geographically redistributed them uh, so that like, you know, Muldra gets a certain subset, but other places get different subsets. One thing that I've been thinking about doing, by the way, because uh, so I think once Shonda has proven that she's got a working garden and she's got a rain barrel that has plumbed into her sink. Um, and she has, you know, learned some trapping skills. I think she'll have enough food and water coming in that we can consider herself, consider herself sufficient. Um, and at that point, we'll have to ask ourselves, what are we doing with these episodes? Because just sort of like bumming around in the game, uh, you know, in, in a world where you're no longer under the same level of survival pressure. I mean, obviously zombies can always kill you, uh, but if you're not under the same level of survival pressure, it might get a little bit less interesting. And it makes me wonder if maybe, maybe our goal should be to try to get Shonda to the point where she is self-sufficient and then freeze her in carbonite with a happy ending. She got self-sufficient in the zombie apocalypse. Stop playing as her, at least for a while, and maybe start a new game with a new character who is just starting from scratch with nothing. Um, and one thing that I've been suggesting, uh, I, I made a tweet about this that, that I should, I think I responded to a, an Andy Hodgett's tweet um, about this, saying that I've gotten so used to Muldra, I really need to branch out. And he actually suggested that I should start a new game with someone who starts in Muldra, just like in my familiar stomping grounds, but then has to leave Muldra and go and settle wherever they land, you know, like dr start driving down a road where I don't know where the road leads and they've got to settle somewhere else. That actually sounds kind of fun. And I could probably amp it up to survivor difficulty because I've gotten so used to builder. I kind of should push myself out into my, out of my comfort zone. So maybe at some point we will put an end to, uh, to this particular series with Shonda. And uh, because, you know, re remember at the beginning of this series, episodes one through 10, all had different protagonists because I was just dying and dying and dying. And this has become the Shonda series. But I wonder if there's like a different, maybe I should just start a different series with episode one, you know, and, uh, and, and have it be at survivor difficulty and it be the story of me taking somebody, uh, a Muldra resident and taking them out into the wild world to discover something new that I haven't seen before. 
Uh, Ari Twitch suggests Rosewood. I actually started a multiplayer game with my friend Christian in, um, in in Rosewood. So I've seen a little bit of Rosewood. Not very much of it yet, but I have seen Rosewood. I have never seen West Point. And the, judging from the fact that March Ridge is out here without, without a spawn point in it, and I know that there's a Louisville out there somewhere, which still intimidates the crap out of me. Um, I feel like there's probably more places that haven't even been named yet for me, in front of me, uh, that could be fun to discover. And maybe there's wilderness places. Maybe, you know, I know that there's like a logging facility just outside of Muldra, which it was full of zombies the time I visited it. It might be kind of fun to explore a place like that, too. You know, that, that something that's not a town, but is just some other kind of place. Yeah, like, oh, Riverside. Uh, yeah, so I think that uh, that's the name of a town that I don't think has a spawn point. That's that's a good uh, call, Airy Twitch. But part of me, like, kind of wants to not do any research into where these other towns are. I mean, I can't help but know a little bit because I found maps of these places. Um, you know, I know that one of the towns is up here. What is it? Is this West Point or is this? I, I don't know what that is. Um and I've got other maps that tell me, you know, where other things are. But part of me kind of wants to go in, in the in a direction that is like least familiar to me. Like just start going west. Like I don't know what's here. I don't know what's here. I don't know what's here. There's something in all these places. Like uh, Andy Hodgetts was was talking a little bit on Twitter about the fact that th the sheer scale of this map just like makes him cry sometimes. <laughs> Not cry. He didn't say cry. But like you know, it's like he just looks at. It, he's like he'll be working on a small part of the map, feel very proud of it, then zoom out and just be like. <gasps> There is so much of this to do. <laughs> and, and I totally feel for him. Um, anyway, okay, it is 2030 now, uh, which is the equivalent of what? It's still only, what, that's like 8, 840 at night? Whatever, it's fine. We're going to sleep. We're going to sleep. Sean is getting bored. She's bored of listening to me talk. She wants to go somewhere, get into some trouble. And so that's what we're going to do. So she has got her... Uh, crappiest revolver loaded up she has got a crowbar and now we've got a rainstorm we're gonna be doing this in a rainstorm well i am not gonna bulk i'm gonna have my breakfast i'm gonna grab my lunch and then we are gonna go get on the road and fight some zombies. And uh, I don't care how wet it is out here. Maybe we're gonna get a cold. Maybe we'll get to explore the sickness system. That would actually be kind of neat. So, you know, it's fine. It's fine. You live in Seattle, you get used to the idea that sometimes you're gonna do things in the rain and you just have to deal with it. So that's what we're doing. We're just gonna deal with the rain. It's okay. Um, should I, I think I'm going to bring one more little snack just in case I need something that's quicker to eat. Should I eat the last of my chocolate? That seems like a lot. Let's bring a granola bar with us in case we need something quick. And we will get out of here. Cogs is making fun of the fact this game is showing off its weather and, uh, mocking state of decay, which of course still does not have weather. Okay. So where we're headed... I need to remind myself. I've been playing in Muldraw so long. I need to remind myself about March Ridge. Down this way. And then jog down here. And it's it's over here. It's kind of weirdly in a parking lot. So, But we go past the gym and then turn. That's the main thing I needed to note. Thing is, I don't know if I want to just stop in the middle of some zombies. Like, I might want to work my way there a little bit. in there conserving my cross my um i keep saying crossbow instead of crowbar i'm sitting here conserving my crowbar like it's not the most resilient weapon in the game we got a whole crowd of them decided to live in this house for some reason got like a little house party going on i saw somebody else out here too yeah there he is wait is he outside or inside i can't even tell there we go he's inside all right. Nothing special on these guys. Let's, uh... Ooh, a key ring with a key on it. I don't... I don't care. Um, so... <laughs> eventually, you, you find so much of the same stuff, you're like, yeah. I think somebody actually... Oh, a party hat, though. They were having a party! They were totally having a party. Um, I... You know what? I'm grabbing that party hat. I don't know. It might be useful someday. <laughs> 
Anyway... Somebody once asked me uh, in, I think it was a YouTube commenter, they asked me about like why I don't loot all the zombie corpses. And so definitely early on in the game, I do loot all the zombie corpses. Like they've all, like, you know, when I'm looking for a watch, for instance, for the first time, like I absolutely loot the zombie corpses. Um, the thing is that like loot in this game, it carries a cost. You have to keep it. You have to organize it. You have to do things with it. Oh, this guy's got an ax. Excuse me, sir. Can I borrow your axe? Thanks. Oh, it's in your neck? Let me just yank it out of there. And there's still, like, like this digital watch, I can, you know, by dismantling this watch, I can get some scrap electronics, which is good for maintaining my uh, generator, and it builds up my electrician skill, and that's all good stuff, right? Like, it's not, it's not bad to loot, but it carries a time cost, and it carries an organization cost. Like, when I get a bunch of stuff home, I gotta put it somewhere. And, you know, when I, and also just like going through all of the loot, like if I, my goal right now is to go and get a bunch of videos at the video store. If I loot every zombie, that takes time. And then I'm going to have less time to get to the video store. And so eventually you get to the point where you have to start valuing your, your time as much as you value your stuff. You know, and like a, a, an item that you could scavenge has to sort of cross a, a value threshold where it's worth the time to pick it up. And so, yeah, so these zombies, like, I kind of want to take care of these zombies because they're right in the middle of the road that I'm going to be traveling all the time. I see that there are zombies on my right and my left, so i got to be careful. These zombies are in the woods. Okay, so those zombies are going to be sneaking up on the right. Let's see how fast I can take these guys out. Before woods guys come out. Oh, looks like... Hey! Hey, zombies. Come here. I don't. I don't like leaving you all sitting there in the woods. That it's creepy. All right. Yeah, these guys—they just all look like ambushes waiting to happen. And so, even though these guys are not right in front of, wah! See, see, see. There we go. Yeah. This is why we preemptively try to find out where the zombies are. Because they can just sneak up behind you. Alright. So I think that anybody who was going to answer my shot would have come out of the woods by now. So, so now and then I'll see something like this shotgun, for instance. And this Desert Eagle pistol that for some reason a cop is carrying. What does a cop need with a Desert Eagle? Come on. Um... But whatever. Um, I mean, I don't mind that I have it now. But yeah, so I saw something on that character. I was like, oh yeah, I definitely want to spend the time to grab that. That's valuable to me. But most of the stuff on these zombies just doesn't rise to that level. Let's drop a couple things I don't need to be carrying around in there. And I guess I should probably slap my axe in there, too. I need to, yeah, make some room in this bag for some videotapes. So Codeless here points out that, yeah, you can always get stuff back. Especially, I mean, zombies are the most renewable resource in this game. There will always be, unless you turn off spawning, there will always be more zombies. But there will not always be more time. You <laughs> you can't get time back. That's a very good point, Coalition. Okay, so those guys from the from the west are going to be coming after me. So I need to take out the guys to the east real fast. Hopefully, before the west guys catch up. But I'll be watching the left side of my character. Oh, okay. There we go. Oh, they're coming from every direction. Okay. All right. Let's get these two pulled. All right. Then smack you, smack you. Oh, okay. My oh, my character's panicking a little bit, and oh, I forgot to refill my water. Okay, hold on. Pulling that water out. So keep walking away from the zombies while I get my water out. Okay, cool. So I've been doing a little bit more research. I don't remember things very well, but I've been doing a little bit more research into sort of what the Moodles do. 
And it looks like... So, the worst moodles for combat are fatigue and exhaustion. Or, like, you know, fatigue being sleepiness. And exhaustion being, you know, you've worked your muscles too hard. Uh, those have such massive impacts, especially at the highest levels. Those have such massive impacts on combat. They're basically death sentences if you let them get too bad. Panic is one that does affect combat. It affects your ability to get, mostly to get critical hits and uh, ranged attacks. Like if you're panicking and your hands are shaking, your aim is going to be worse. Um, but they're not, the panic isn't as bad for combat as tiredness is. So you can see because my character is fighting so many zombies um, and their panic level is high, that means that they're also going to be less effective in combat. Like, like each hit that I'm doing is doing less damage, is having less of an impact on the zombies. And so it means that the zombies are lasting longer and threatening more to overwhelm me. Um, okay, I might need to... I might switch to my gun just to thin this crowd out a little bit from afar. Because I'm... There's so many of them. They basically... They're tanking my hits for each other. It's like, I'll knock one zombie down, but there'll be a fresh zombie right behind them. And then, okay, finally, I'm starting to get, like, second and third hits on these guys. That's the thing. It's like, your first hit often doesn't doesn't take out the zombie. It's the second or third hit that usually does it. And so if the zombies are sort of, like, playing leapfrog, you can go a long time killing zero zombies from a crowd. <laughs> Because, you know, you'll hit one zombie once, and then they'll fall behind, and other zombies will get in front of them. And then and then the next zombie you hit is one that has never been hit before. And you just keep doing that, and it just the crowd never gets smaller, until you suddenly, you're doing second and third hits on every zombie. And then suddenly, things get better for you. Okay, so I am now... You can see I've got the little moodle up there that says I'm, I'm exerted. Moderate exertion. Yeah, so I've gotten less effective in combat. I need to take a break. I don't remember where I left my car. <laughs> I got really far away. So, okay. I forgot what this building was. Okay, I think I can handle one zombie, which is good because I've got one zombie. All right, let's... I want to get to a place that's fairly secure. I don't know if... This is the movie theater, right? I don't know if the movie theater is fairly secure. If I can get into a small room and close myself in, I can take a little rest. I can eat. Okay, here we go. No zombies in here, as far as I can tell. So let's have a snack. Gotta unpack my sloshing saucepan of stew or whatever, of, of rice from my backpack. <laughs> eat it. Okay, that didn't fill me up completely, so I'm gonna I'm gonna eat another dose of it. And let's throw my empty bottle in my bag. Actually, actually wait a minute, no, I can fill this empty bottle. Let's fill all my empty bottles with leftover water from these pipes. Do I still need to? Yes, I didn't fully fill my bottle. Okay, there we go. So I'll put my backup bottle back in my bag. Drink, and then... Okay, I'm not exerted anymore. I'm going to sit down for just... Cause I think I might still have a hidden exertion. So I'm going to sit on the ground for just a second to make sure that my exertion has fully gone away. And I'll try to catch up with the chat here. So Ranathcord suggested um, the name of a town called Bywater, but I don't know if he was saying that there's a town in this game called Bywater, or if he was just um, riffing on the fact that Airy Twitch suggested Riverside, which is also which also means Bywater. <laughs> so I can't quite tell there. <laughs> Airy Twitch apparently enjoys it when I politely come up to a zombie and say, "Excuse me, sir." <laughs> I'm, gl I'm glad you enjoy that because I don't know. It's, it's kind of how I keep. Fighting zombies endlessly. Uh, interesting for myself. Oh, Renneth Court says Bywater is in the Shire, apparently. Okay, got it. I, I didn't get the reference. Okay. Okay, we've sat down for a second. 
I'm sure we're fine. So, now I kited a bunch of zombies in this direction. But more of them might have gathered around my car without realizing where I went. So, yeah, there's a crowd of them over here. I should walk I should walk more and run less, because running also exerts you. So technically, probably don't need to kill these zombies. But having a bunch of zombies gathered near the woods bothers me. <laughs> okay, because you saw how those, you know, I was I was shouting at one zombie that I saw in the woods and like four came out. Like, freaks me out to have woods zombies. Because they just don't know. You don't know what's going to happen. So if I, if I know there are wood zombies, I kind of... Kind of want to do something about it. Preemptively. Before they sneak up on me later on. Yeah, there's even more of them. It's interesting how this rainstorm really makes it difficult for me as a player to see the zombies. Like, there's ways you can simulate... Your character not seeing the zombies? But, like, I literally have trouble distinguishing zombies from the background. So, I don't know how many more zombies might be hiding in these woods. So, I know that guy's there. But I'm shouting so I can bring out any others. Rather than trying to go in to the woods and just discover them um, in a more tactile way. Okay, so. The video store is down this way. Let's clear the known zombies out. You know, relying on your ability to sort of make the player see or not see things, um, you know, by sort of obscuring them in the art, it's always a, a tricky proposition because, like, you can too... Like, I'm, you know, with my glasses on, I have fairly normal vision, right? And so you can tune a game like this to someone like me um, to start. And you can make it really good for... Like, this is a really good representation of what it's like for me to try to see things during a dark rainstorm. You know, like, this is pretty accurate, and it feels like an appropriate challenge. However, to someone who actually has low vision, you know, who's trying to roleplay as a character who sees fine, uh, who sees like me, but they themselves have low vision, this, like, like t turning the entire screen really gray and obscured it makes the game harder for them than it's supposed to be. Like, like this, like the difficulty level that I'm experiencing, seeing, you know, what's going on in this weather, is is the one I believe that the developers intended for every player to have. But if you've got a player who has, you know, low vision and actually, you know, this level of low visibility is actually their normal experience with the game, amping it up to this level of low visibility could make the game unplayable at a time when the developers don't intend for the game to be unplayable. Like they, like, they don't intend the game to be unplayable when it's a rainstorm. They just want it to be a little harder. But if if you're a player for whom, you know, this crosses a boundary into unplayability, then it's inappropriate. And so it's, it's always an interesting challenge because, you know, you want your game to be accessible to as many people as possible. And so figuring out what kind of accommodations to make. Like, if you want everyone to be able to have an equivalent experience in a rainstorm where... Zombies get a little harder to see, but it's still playable. You got to figure out not only what is that experience like for you know, a player with, with fairly standard, uh, you know, common uh, vision capabilities like me, but also what's it like for players who have who have limits in that area, and how do you make a game that is also appropriately balanced for them? And it's it's not as easy as just like oh yeah we'll just turn on this setting right because they've tuned all of the art and the atmosphere. To, to, to line up together. There's a lot of different things, different pieces that are all contributing to this final experience. And tuning all of them is a big effort. And so you got to figure out, like, is it... Do you give people an accommodation where it's like you just say, hey, rainstorms don't darken the world? You know, and, and you, you take change that one bit of it? Do you have just a completely differently tuned set of settings? That feels like a lot. And, and more, I think, than even people who are asking for those accommodations, more than they would even ask for. And so, but yeah, finding the right answer can be kind of a fun challenge. <laughs> Let's see here. <laughs> so, Coalition making fun of the fact that as I was talking about the fact that I have sort of, um, uh, you know, fairly normal vision, I was in the process of crashing my car while I said that. Well, you know, I think, you know, my vision doesn't really, <laughs> doesn't account for the fact that uh, it's difficult to see where things are 
in uh, 3D in an isometric world. I don't consider that to be my fault. Okay, so here we got exposure survival. Oh, we got car zone. Car zone is good for teaching yourself mechanics. Magical woodland. So most of the um, most of the videos that have an like an episode number at the end are life and living channel videos that teach you skills. I think magical woodland, which I assumed was like a video about living in the woods, it's just it's like a children's show. I don't think it actually teaches you anything. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave magical woodland behind. Now all of these VHS tapes show up in the training materials list for your character. Um, but I don't think that means that all of them actually train skills. Like, I think that I, I think that this just basically tells you what has this character watched and listened to so that oh woodcraft. Wait, I might already have those. Anyway, whatever. Um, so that you just know what's not worth picking up, uh, because you've already seen it. Your character obviously would know what they've already seen, uh, because you know, they'll get a little familiarity reaction from their brain when they look at it. But you know, especially if you're playing multiple characters. Like, you're not going to be able to keep track of all that. So I, I think that's why they give us that list. Look at these back shelves. Fitness club. Again, I don't know if fitness club trains anything either. We'll see, though. Sorted client. And then there's also... Okay, there's a bathroom. That's always valuable. Drink from the sink. Fill all my water bottles. Oh, interesting. So Malator says apparently there are... Um, so what is the difference? Why are there two different columns here? One says VHS and one says home VHS. Does, does home VHS... Oh, home VHS. Does that just mean people have recorded their own videos? That's what that is. It's like people's family videos and stuff like that. Okay. Or things they've recorded off TV like Omega Department, do not tape over. Stuff like that. Got it. Okay, so there actually are some. And so I mentioned, yeah, you would not find those in a video store. You'd only find them in houses. But apparently, uh, according to uh, to Malator, there actually is, like, for instance, a, a granny knitting in a video that uh, that does teach you tailoring. So, there, so it's not just sort of the life and living ones that give you skills. There's other ones, too. The janitor. Danger in your bed. Dead wrong, space crew, strangely true. What's over here? Uh, the Cook Show. I'm going to watch The Cook Show. And then... Mother's Boy. No, not that one. All right, I think... I think we found all the training videos I could identify in the video store. And I'm hungry again, so I'm going to eat. Actually, let's, let's go inside. Oh, I can't get in here. Oh, they closed the laundry for the zombie apocalypse? What's wrong with these people? Um, <laughs> all right. I was just going to go inside a place that looks relatively secure, but it's actually not secure if I have to break a window. So I'm going to go back in here, and I'm going to eat my food. So eat a quarter of that. Surprised that enough time has passed for me to get hungry again. I didn't feel like I did that much. Oh, Malator says that Mother's Boy teaches a skill. Really? Where did I see Mother's Boy? <laughs> I forgot where it was. Okay, I'm getting tired. I should head home soon. Um, was, that one, was that one in the back room? If that teaches a skill... Yeah, it's like, oh, man. This is the kind of thing that you want, like, a Wikipedia entry for. Or, or, or sorry, a wiki entry for. Not Wikipedia. That doesn't... They don't do video game hints. But, um... There we go. Mother's Boy. Like, I could watch every video in this game myself. And learn which ones teach skills and which ones don't. That is an option. However... <laughs> oh, an extinguisher. That's actually valuable. Uh, it's not an attractive option. <laughs> If I want to be really effective, I think it's kind of okay if I decide to rely a little bit on other people's expertise.
Coralicion is pointing out that maybe I shouldn't be so surprised about my character's um, need to eat, because people do actually need to eat three times a day, typically. Uh, that is true. And actually, that's probably part of my problem, um, is that, like, I... In my actual personal life, like, I tend to do things when I feel the need to do them. It's hard for me to actually make habitual schedules for myself. I go to sleep at a different time every night. I, you know, I eat whatever I get hungry. Um, I, I'm kind of bad at having, at sort of forming good habits and good schedules. Um, is this a locked metal door? Let's find out. So, as a result of that, I kind of play video games the same way, too. And so rather than doing the smart thing and having my character, ooh, oh, a propane tank, wow. Having my character eat regularly, you know, oh, let's have lunch, dinner, whatever. Uh, I don't need another garden saw, so I'm not going to grab it. I don't remember what my wrench situation is. Um, like, I, so I just don't, I don't, I tend not to think of eating until my character actually says they're hungry. But if all I do is feed my character when they say they're hungry and, um, you know, and I'm feeding them things that are not very calorie rich, they will become underweight. Like, that's why Shonda is underweight, is because that's the way that I've been feeding her, feeding her as a character. Um, so let's drop this stuff on the ground because this actually feels, actually, I should grab this car battery too, just because, I don't know, why not? Um, but I actually want to grab these shelves. It's always useful to have more metal shelves. Okay. So I'm slow now, so let's hope there's no zombies around. Stick these shelves in here. I've got so much stuff. I'm feeling good about the scavenging run. One thing I didn't bring, food. Uh... Looks like I'm a little overloaded. Is there something else I can stick back here in case I need to get out and fight a zombie? Let's see. What do I have that's easy to... Oh, the car battery. That's probably the heaviest thing in my bag. Let's drop that and see how we're doing. There we go. 11.05. So, Utini to Killer Jawa is calling this blockbuster zombie simulator. <laughs> yeah, basically, it is kind of fun. I, I actually really like how mundane this game sometimes is, right? It's like you're, just, you're, you're in a video store looking for VHS tapes. Like, you can imagine there being, like, a scene in a zombie show. Oh, I'm okay, I want to fight these zombies, but I'm tired, so I'm not going to. Um, but you can imagine there being a scene in a zombie show where characters get into, like, an old blockbuster video... And there's no zombies in it, and they've secured the place already. And so for a moment, they've got they get this little moment of peace where they're not about to get attacked, and they just start browsing videos. And they're browsing videos with the same attitude and the same standards and the same thought processes that you'd have in your normal to everyday life. And it gets kind of weirdly domestic kind of at that point. And you're like, instead of being on this hair-raising survival adventure, you're just looking at videos. Um I kind of, there's kind of these fun little moments of peace like that sometimes um, in these stories. And I, I like the fact that Project Zomboid gives you that. You know, it's not just like, there's actual, they give you, it's not just that they, like, yeah, you're not always fighting zombies, and so therefore you have quiet times. It's like, there are, there are reasons in the gameplay for you to take time to do things like that. You know, a lot of this game, like, when things are going well, this game ends up very domestic. <laughs> So I'm going to stick the videos I haven't watched yet. I've got extra woodcraft. Cool. Uh, in this briefcase. And so I can go through them and keep track of them. And then I'm going to... Where do I keep stuff? Uh, so I think a lot of my materials go in here. Including metal sheets, welding rods. Am I right about that? Maybe I've been keeping... Have I been keeping metal stuff somewhere else? I might have been... Ooh. What do I keep in here? I forgot. Aha, I have been keeping metal stuff over here. So, I know that everyone just loves watching me <laughs> do this. Just move things around. That's what I'm doing. I'm moving things around. I think electronics goes up there too. What does go here? Okay, I want to have an... If I'm going to have an extinguisher, I want to have the extinguisher in the kitchen where I'm likely to set the oven on fire. 
Oh, you know what I didn't get? I didn't go get a freezer. I mean, I ended up filling up my everything. So, like, it's, like, I filled up my back of my car. So, it's it's okay. But I'm sad. That was, that was one of my goals, was to get myself a freezer. I'm really tired right now. So, maybe we'll do that in our next session. Uh, I'm going to stick my saucepan outside where it can get all watery. Uh, okay, I can drop off the electronics and the metal stuff over here. So this is my metal stuff section. Let's drop that off right there. And then let's put my my crap electronics here. Uh, I've got those garbage bags. I've got the party hat. Okay, the party hat goes on the table, so I don't forget that I have it. Right there. Um... The wrench, I've, yeah. Where do I, am I where do I keep my tools? Or do, I have a, do I have a wrench box? I do have a wrench box. Okay, I'm going to put this wrench with the pipe wrenches. And then I want those garbage bags over here in the briefcase where they go. And then I think that's the stuff that I had in my backpack. But we've got more. We've got a propane tank. We've got a car battery, which we can't even fit in there. We've got a Desert Eagle pistol and a shotgun. I can't carry all... You know what? I'm just going to not bother putting it in my bag. I'm just going to carry it all. And it's going to be stupidly heavy. Um, I mean, while we're at it, let's carry these metal shelves. Can I carry all that? Let's see. Here we go. Yes. Oh, I'm so overloaded right now. It's great. Okay. Yeah, this this is me coming home from the grocery store. I'm like, I can carry all of this in one trip. I know I can. Um, oh, wait. Let's disassemble this wooden chair. All right. Now I can place. Nope, not pick up. I can place more shelves on these walls. And they ended up getting a plank on them. Let's not do that. You can see the names of my bags here on the table. The long pointy bag is long pointy weapons. And the long smacky bag is long smacky weapons. Uh, which Of which I have a lot. So I don't know what goes on this shelf. Maybe planks go on that shelf. And I've got my car battery, which I guess probably goes on the same shelf as my gas cans, if there's space. So, uh, Coalition, if you're, if you're trying to think of ideas for um, bets to run in the next episode, I can tell you what my intentions are. So my plan is to go to Muldraw and try to get a um, sledgehammer again. But before I go, I actually want to leave some traps behind here. Oh, the axe, that goes in the long pointy bag with the other long pointies. Thwunk. And, oh wait, I'm carrying this propane tank around. So yeah, let's put the propane tank here, I guess, so I can refill my propane torch. And then I think, I think that's everything. Oh no, 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 I've got my, my my guns. So I gotta go head up to my arsenal room. Remind myself where I'm keeping all my guns. So I think I've got a whole bag of shotguns already. I do. A bag of four shotguns. So this shotgun, I'm gonna unload it. And then I'm just, I guess I'm just gonna start piling them on the ground. I mean. I've just got so many. Eventually, I think you can use parts of old shotguns to, like, repair newer shotguns and things like that. So that's why I'm holding on to them. But, yeah. And similarly, I've got, I've already got a Desert Eagle pistol somewhere in good condition. Here it is. So do I, are there bullets in this thing? There are. Okay, so let's eject the magazine and rack the pistol to pop out the one bullet. And then let's empty. Let's insert that bullet back in this magazine. And then I do... Do I have... 
I've got more magnum rounds. Let's grab one more. Let's stick it in the magazine. And then... Now I've got a spare magazine for my Desert Eagle. So let's slap that in there with the Desert Eagle. And then uh, these shotgun shells. I think I'm just keeping... Am I keeping all of my... No, where am I keeping my... Uh, shotgun shells go in this container. And then this extra Desert Eagle. I think I'm... Am I keeping... Where am I keeping extra pistols? I know I've got extra pistols somewhere. Where am I keeping my extra pistols? Here they are. I originally called that ammo bag, but it's not correct. Let's rename that. This is pistol bag. Or handgun bag, I should say. There's revolvers in there, too. Handgun bag. Okay, so we've dropped those suckers off. So Coalition is suggesting that we could make a bet about how many of my traps will actually trap anything. Uh, that seems fair. Um, I don't, I'm not actually sure how many traps I'm going to leave. So maybe you want to save that until after I've actually set the traps. Uh, and you can see how much, how much is going into it. Utini is suggesting that, that this game would benefit from having wall mounts for guns. That would certainly save me some space. I do tend to eventually at some point, once I've collected enough guns, make an arsenal room of some kind that, um where I'll, I'll, I'll lay out tables and I'll like, like stretch them all out on tables and stuff. Okay, so if I'm going to take a trip in the morning to Muldra, I need to... Why am I closing the door in my own face? Um, I need to bring some food with me. So let's grab a couple of saucepans because most of what I have right now is pasta and rice. Uh, so I'll grab some saucepans. Um, I guess we'll grab one cook pot too because if i want okay so here's what i need to do i need to leave town i need to leave town probably for a couple of nights if i want to maximize the chance of my traps uh catching something and so i want to bring enough food to last me a couple of nights so let's see here so let's um while i'm out there too i'm hoping that i can find some more canned food and stuff too because uh the main thing i want is is a sledgehammer, but I am running low on, on, on canned food and my farm is not going to be productive for a little while. So I'm going to make some beef stew here. Put the last of my lentils in it. Put some black beans in it. Uh, put some chickpeas in it. And what else? Just I guess I'll put the rest of the beef in there. It's only two, but whatever, that's fine. Let's just stick that in the oven for and the stove for now. And actually, I guess I could turn it on because stew takes longer to cook than pasta or rice. But then I'm gonna grab this, and let's put pasta in one of these saucepans. And then let's put rice in the other one. Let's make sure this is going to warn me if I take too long. So let's um, set an alarm here. Okay, so I think rice can put mayonnaise in it. And uh, I think that's probably going to have some calories. And also this mayonnaise is kind of stale. So I should use it before it gets worse. That's all I've got in my fridge. Honestly, I could probably turn off the power when I'm not cooking right now. Um, I think vegetable soup I can actually... Can I? Mushroom soup I can definitely put in pasta and rice. I don't know if I can put vegetable soup in, in pasta and rice. Let's see. So what can I do with pasta? Pasta lets me put mushroom soup in it. And marinara. I'll put marinara in as a spice just because delicious. Um, the rice also lets me put the mushroom soup in it. So let's do that. Um, but I'm actually I'm kind of low on other things I can put in this meal. Uh, let me open some bolognese and just see... If I can merge that with my pasta. Yes, okay. I can, oh, so I can give it a pretty massive boost by putting bolognese in there. So now I've got a little bit of stuff in these. I don't want to... Hmm. The thing is, I don't think I can put the dried beans in them. 
yeah, I, I can't put the dried beans in them. So I've actually got a pretty limited set of options here. Okay, it's starting to burn. So let's get this out. So yeah, I, I really am. Like, I'm running lower on food than I realized. Like, I need I need to, 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 to bring some food back with me from Muldra when I go. So we could try opening some other things like maybe maybe this vegetable soup can be used to make I mean I could definitely use this vegetable soup to make a weird pasta or rice dish I don't know if they're gonna let me do it no okay I can't use the veggie soup uh, so I guess what I'll have to do is just make kind of um, pasta and rice without as many calories in them because I, I literally have nothing else I can add except for, I mean, I, I can put more bolognese in there, I guess. So yeah, to put more of that in the pasta. I, I assumed I couldn't put it in the rice. Oh no, I can. I put a little tiny bit of it in the rice. So I think that's, I mean, I want to hold on to that bolognese that's in there just because I might need another one. It's, I might need something else to eat. So I guess we'll cook these two. But they're not very high yield. So yeah, I am going to... This is still kind of a hungry time for Shonda. I'm going to... I'm going to have a look at this tin can. It doesn't look like it's full of water. It would say it was full of water. So I've got a bunch of empty tin cans. Airy Twitch is, is is horrified that I'm mixing like a, a, a like a, a mushroom cream sauce with um, marinara. So I actually do that all the time. I, I I'm a big fan of like rose sauces where you make like a cream sauce and you put marinara or equivalent to marinara in the sauce and you make sort of a creamy tomato sauce. I actually really like that. So this is actually my favorite kind of um of pasta sauce. But you know, teats their own. Kosia says mayonnaise with rice that's a war crime I mean I don't know I don't know why it's in there I'm just I'm just taking advantage of it because it's a possibility okay so I've got some food to pack with me and I'll bring some snacks too I I, I like to kind of exhaust things when I can it just makes the, my um, stacks simpler but I think I think we're about ready to go. Okay, so we got a plan for tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm gonna grab all this food. I'm gonna hop in my car. No, no. Tomorrow morning, I'm gonna try to make some traps. I'm gonna make some traps. Then and I'm gonna bait those traps. Then I'm gonna hop in my car. Then I'm gonna go to Multra. Then I'm gonna try to find myself not only a um, a sledgehammer, but also some more food to bring back home. And then hopefully that will be enough uh, to keep Shonda alive <laughs> for another little while. So I think, yeah, we're not quite ready to move on to uh, a completely different series, like I was suggesting at the beginning of this episode, because Shonda is not yet self-sufficient. Shonda is still regularly running out of food. And uh, and until she gets her first yield from that from that farm, she's still kind of in big trouble. So, uh, so we're going to continue with Shonda next episode. Uh, and this is a subscribe button for you two people later on. Uh, that's the next Shonda episode, so go and join us there whenever you're ready. And uh, if you're watching me live on Twitch, of course, do it right now.